it's very clear that what we are doing next is making sure that our nodes, our sensors that are out there in the field, have a real um, multi-mode, if you will, ability to communicate with not only things like a UAV that can power it on and off, but also tap into sources of energy. In, in our case, and we, we, we have it coupled with solar energy panels uh, to help power it when needed. And we've also, because we also because we do deploy things like piezoelectric sensor actuators in the field, it's sort of becoming well known that there are ways to exploit those to do exactly that. When they're not being used as sensors, use them as harvesters. You know, and, and of course the big challenges there then become efficiency, you know, energy conversion efficiency. Can you actually harvest enough energy to be useful? It's very much uh, the, the an energy harvesting uh, conversion efficiency. That's, in my opinion, that's really one of the, the, the challenges that, that challenges all of us working in the field. And specifically, we're trying to, to figure out the optimal, if you put it that way, ways to use, for example, piezoelectric devices or piezoelectric devices coupled with other modes, such as solar panel, the solar collection, in a way that actually provide the energy when you need it. And, and storing it, too, uh, appropriately, either in capacitor banks, which have pluses and minuses, or other things, so that the energy is always there when you need it, and you don't introduce extra complexity into the system needlessly, just to, just to do it. The sensor should be placed where there's the most vibration, the biggest vibrations occurring most of the time in the frequency range that the particular sensor you've put there is most in tune to feeling. And so that's, that means uh, effectively combining elements of knowing a lot about your structure's vibrational behavior, that's a huge problem in itself, knowing something about how uh, about the um, fundamental um, performance and uh, efficiency of p the piezoelectric geometry that you've deployed, and then it opens up challenges of do you have any controllability to like move sensors around maybe, or to have banks of sensors that only some of them turn on as needed to, to when, when they're the ones that are lit up by the particular ambient state of energy. The big thing there in structural health monitoring is mining the data. You know, what information can you extract from the data to tell you something useful about the structure. Because I mean, all you get from a sensor at the end of the day is raw data. It doesn't mean anything. It's a bunch of numbers flying at you. So you got you to turn those numbers into information. And one of the areas that, that I've done a lot of active research in in, in, in in that area is to use the concepts of nonlinear dynamics. Uh, there, there's some key principles there. And, and Because what comes off of a sensor is a time series. It's a series of numbers. And so we use some principles uh, rooted in, in, in nonlinear princi uh, dynamics principles principles to essentially um, uh, uh, look for some more sensitivity and how to pull out that information than some of the more traditional uh, methods that people have applied. So there's a, we, we just feel like that's a rich area to mine because most, most engineers are not too comfortable with, with nonlinear because we know how to solve linear problems. When things line up in a line and they're proportional and it, you know, it makes sense. When things don't, you know, analysis quickly falls apart. So, so engineers aren't always comfortable with nonlinearity, but it turns out that that's a rich area because that's often the, where the most information is present in a structural response.